Um, Steve is, is, uh, is the QST editor um, and uh, is going to talk to us about satellite operations at the ARRL HQ. Thank you, Steve. Is my microphone working properly? It must be. Okay. Well, I wanted to, uh, f first of all, before I begin, uh, a thank you to AMSAT UK for inviting me to speak. Uh, it was just a happy coincidence that I was going to be over here uh, to begin with. Uh, my wife and I are celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary, and she asked me, what would you like to do that you have never done before? <laughs> and uh, I wasn't quite sure how to interpret that, but uh, finally I said, well, I've never been to England, ever. And my, in college, uh, my concentration was British literature. And it's taken me 36 years to finally, after obtaining my degree, to finally get here uh, in the place that I studied for, for so long. And in fact, when I walked off the plane at Heathrow, I was rather emotional. I, I couldn't believe that I was actually at this place. And I've been here three days, and I, I still haven't. In fact, my wife was appalled I, when we finally got outside. I Just as we were waiting for a bus, I reached down, and I wanted to touch British soil. I just wanted to touch it. And to to you know, confirm that I was at long last truly here. So thank you, and thank you, Trevor, again, for helping uh, arrange everything. I appreciate that. Uh, satellite operations at headquarters, we actually have, as you'll see in a moment, we, we have two satellite facilities. And I'll, this is mostly a, a picture show, if you will, but we'll, we'll show those. The, this is the main headquarters building and we're located in Newington, Connecticut, uh, which if uh, how well versed you are in geography is a suburb of Hartford, Connecticut, which is about, uh, by car, probably about two, two and a half hours northeast of New York City. And we employ at headquarters here 100 people in our organization uh, doing any number of things. I'm my own particular area of concern is I'm the uh, publication manager and I'm the editor-in-chief of QST magazine and so my job is primarily to publish books and to get a, a magazine out the door every month and what you're seeing here is a somewhat dated picture we've since updated the building for the hundredth uh, anniversary this and finally we're, we're closing in on the satellite operations this is the actual station building of W1AW. Hiram Percy Maxim, who was uh, one of the founders of the ARRL and our first president, passed away suddenly uh, while on a train trip in 1936. And two years later, in 1938, the ARRL purchased this land. The headquarters building that you saw a moment ago was not on the, the property at that time, but they built this somewhat small building and they christened it the headquarters station W1AW and it's been there ever since. We get quite a few visitors every year to it. Um, in any given year, probably several thousand, I would imagine. We have several towers on the property. This is just one. I snapped this picture before I got on the airplane, left the office to get on the airplane to come here, in fact. This is a uh, one of the two 30-meter towers for our HF antennas that are used for bulletins and also used for guest operations. If you ever happen to uh, come over to the States, you're welcome to visit and actually operate the station. That's one of the antenna arrays you'll be using. This is the satellite array, array for W1AW itself. And you can see here the cross Jaggi for two meters. There's 70 centimeters. We also have a 2.4 gigahertz dish, and we're in the process of putting up a 1296 uh, antenna. I mention it, but uh, it will be up. We have a new one that will be coming up shortly. We use 5.8's hardline all the way down the antenna, 
to feed those, and then they go into the headquarters building, which is just adjacent there. That's the main entrance, if you come to the building. And inside, in addition to our facilities that transmit the bulletins that you may occasionally hear on the air, we have three separate studios. If you come as a guest, you get your choice of whichever studio is open. This happens to be a view of uh, Studio One, and that is Mike Corey, our emergency uh, communications preparedness manager. All of the equipment, uh, or virtually all of it, is either donated or it is purchased. A lot of it's donated, mostly donated, I would say. And this is the, the, the satellite operating position in Studio Two. You can see an IC9100 uh, sitting there. Um, we have a, uh, uh, the AEA DSP-232. I know somewhat dated, but it, it's still functional for us. The ASU manual antenna controller, and uh, that little box right there um, was developed by Mark Spencer, WA8SME, and uh, he was uh, mentioned just earlier this morning in the, in the talk. Uh, Mark is our educational coordinator, and his job is to conduct, among other things, what we call teachers' institutes, where we try to get teachers to integrate amateur radio into their classroom studies. And Mark developed that little box primarily because it was so expensive for us and for the teachers, really not so much for us, but for the teachers, to purchase the units that would actually interface from the rotator controls to their computers. As some of you may know, they're, they're fairly pricey. So he invented that, uh, kitted it up. Uh, I think it's something on the order of, uh, oh, 30 or $40 US, something like that. And the uh, teachers who are doing satellite type operations will routinely do that, uh, will build the kit, I mean. Uh, by the way, as long as I'm mentioning Mark, um, he uh, is having a great deal of enjoyment with uh, FunCube and monitoring the telemetry. Uh, just before I left, uh, we spoke, and he's particularly fascinated, although unfortunately I don't have many of the details, but uh, he has been monitoring the spin of the satellite. And he was intrigued because he is seeing um, certain anomalies in the spin, excuse me, <clears throat> and at first, he thought it was something to do with heat, heating and cooling, as the satellite would spin slightly or move out of twilight and into the sun and into night. But now he's wondering and he's, uh, he's aggressively pursuing uh, whether or not he could be seeing uh, the YORP effect on the satellite. And uh, he's uh, working on his own little scientific project to see if that's provable and if indeed that's what's happening. There is a better view of the uh, controller interface that Mark designed. I don't know if that is actually still available, other than to to teachers. I think they're in the neighborhood of uh, U.S. about uh, two hundred, three hundred dollars, perhaps more, something like that. So it, it's a it's a serious expense for for the teachers, you know, in, in far flung classrooms. This, uh, obviously you recognize this as a Yesu Azel rotator. Uh, the reason I snapped this, this is the uh, workstation or uh, shop room, if you will, at W1AW. Uh, they're in the, they just purchased this there in the process when I took the photo of uh, getting it ready to install at the other satellite station that I'll show you briefly here in a moment over at headquarters. This is the headquarters satellite station, or the headquarters station, I should say. Uh, the rules that we have as, as employees at the League is they prefer that we not operate W1AW. That's for guests. That's for you if you come to visit. If we want to operate, and we must do it either before work, after work, or during our, our lunch breaks, uh, we have to come here. So many amateurs don't realize that uh, unless they look it up, that when they see those call signs on the air, that that's actually us. And we're not trying to be sneaky or, or discreet, it's just many don't know. And uh, Laird Campbell was my predecessor 
uh, at headquarters, and they named the station in his name. This is the satellite position there, and we're in the process of renovating that. Once again, you see the Mark's little control box up there. But uh, you see there has a uh, Kenwood TS-2000. We used this position, by the way, to uh, when FunCube was first launched, to, uh, to listen in on that. We were controlling manually. We didn't have Mark's controller yet at that time, but uh, it was a lot of fun. This is the ARRL lab. Uh, the view doesn't really show quite everything here, uh, and it's rather dark, but it's about twice the size of, of what you see. And back, oh, a number of years ago, uh, the ARRL uh, worked closely uh, with a number of organizations, including AMSAT and A, uh, on various uh, satellite projects. A number of those were conducted in the lab. And in fact, if you go there and you tour the lab area, oh, and by the way, this is the screen room where uh, if you're a QST reader, we do our product review testing every month. This is where it takes place in the screen room area. But what I wanted to show you is actually this. This is the Oscar I flight model. And the story behind this was that uh, the station manager of W1AW, a gentleman by the name of Joe Karsha, and another fellow, Bob Allison, who is our chief test engineer at the lab. Uh, if you get digital QST, you see him in the product review videos. They got this out of the league museum and they were taking a look at it and they wondered if it was possible to get it back into operation in some fashion after so many years and because it was uh, badly corroded and so on. Well, they, they managed to get it back into operation and when you go there, they have, which is not visible off to the side of the photo there, they have a receiver and they have it uh, powered down to just part, what we call, excuse me, part 15 power levels where you don't have to have a license and all that. And it sends Oscar and Hi over and over and over if you go through there and you can, uh, you can get to see it and actually hear it. Uh, in terms of uh, pictures, that's all I have to show except that uh, I brought some along with me as I said to Trevor, uh, but uh, I don't know if they would be <laughs> of that much interest. It's about how the magazine goes together and you, you've seen one magazine, you've, you've seen them all. But I wanted to keep it short because I didn't want to get uh, over my time. How am I doing, Graham? I'm, okay, okay. Uh, were there any questions at all? All right, Graham. I think okay. I'm. Thank you very much. Very then, good. Steve. That's Thank very, you. That's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Short, short pause while we, whilst we swap over technology f from Windows to Linux. Uh, 